Welcome everybody to AI Weekly. Um, don't confuse that with a, um, LA Confidential, yeah, but AI Weekly. It's a super exciting week uh, in AI. Um, I've actually seen with Matthias this week a lot of movement in the healthcare space and the uh, deployment and use of artificial intelligence. Obviously, this is nothing new, um, but uh, there's, a, there's a big push towards um, the use of AI, uh, I would say, in the field. Yeah. So we've seen like really, really cool examples happen um, and to be announced that have been announced this week. So everything from, you know, uh, AI used in radiology to determine um, to determine whether uh, patients have um, specific uh, masses over their lungs or masses uh, um, over other areas. So just basically reading uh, radiology pictures to robots being deployed with the help of uh, elderly people in New York State, right? So we see the actual government getting involved in deployment of AI in healthcare. And until now, I think we've seen a lot of these models just being uh, theor theoretic, yeah? And now we see them more and more coming into real life examples. So I'm wondering, you know, what's the, what's the step between developing something as a, you know, theoretical use case and then how difficult, you know, what are the steps to actually take it to production? Yeah? Like, I think the reliability of such models is the big question, right? Like, uh, can you rely on them enough to put them in a, in a robot that actually takes care of your grandma? And I'm wondering what are the, like, how do people actually go from making the model into making it reliable enough? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I don't actually know the framework uh around this uh but i guess i can imagine it goes through quite rigorous testing um similar like when you uh, are creating new drugs for example uh, yeah. because i think the last thing anyone wants uh both in uh, healthcare and ai is that a system like this would um, uh, make a faulty diagnose or uh, uh, break the finger on on grandma <laughs> yeah, I think we saw, we all saw the news uh, this week that a robot uh, playing chess in Russia, right, at a tournament, uh, broke the finger of a seven-year-old boy, right? Yeah. And, and obviously this is a very, um, it's, it's an unfortunate accident, but it's, it wasn't uh, a massive fault of the model. It was just, you know, it didn't recognize that a hand was there. Yes, the finger was at the wrong place at the, at the wrong time, we can say. Yes. So maybe, yeah, maybe I, we should I, look, we... look, into some, look into some of the, the news we did see this weekend, in, uh, especially in healthcare. So I can start with one. Uh, yeah. And that is that uh, uh, they have now, through a new study, they have been able to figure out that AI are able to... Uh, reduce uh, risk of death for patients with CFPs. Uh, so these new model are able to reduce this with about 20%. And personally, I think this is a, it's a great use case of artificial intelligence. Yeah, I'm, I mean, for me, I totally agree where you use AI as an enhancement. Um, that allows specialists like doctors to avoid taking a higher risk, right? Because this is a clear example where things are normally done by humans and here you apply AI and you reduce the risk of uh, mistakes and you reduce the risk of death, which is super important, especially, you know, if you're in that group of people that don't die. So this is very nice. I mean, the other news that I saw that is correlated to this is that, um, uh, a startup, uh, Fiator, um, which is an AI platform that analyzes surgery videos, it closed a major financing round, you know, like Series A at $40 million, which is a big valuation. Um, and effectively, it uses machine learning 
uh, and computer vision to structure raw footage and compare this video to other videos of the same procedure and, you know, find uh, mistakes or things that can be um, done better. Yeah. And then it finds the good outcome characteristic. Yeah. So like, what is a good outcome of a procedure in a operating? So it reduces the risk of death effectively, right? So that was major, I think, and connected very closely to this. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, um, a new law was passed in the US in the ballpark uh, one, uh, one to two years ago that actually allow for machines that are, are uh, um, uh, fully or partly driven by AI to actually uh, send data back uh, to the training. So, for example, if we have um, X-ray machine and machines and so on. So, so previously you needed to collect this data set over a period of time, then kind of lift it out from the machine, lift it into training. But um, I believe today the machines can be directly connected actually. And so once it performs a scan, it just sends those images back directly to uh, uh, create additional training on it. So that way we don't have to wait months between version upgrades it's a continuous uh process and i also believe um uh, some some recent studies actually show that ai systems are more correct when it comes to such things as uh, uh, x-rays or or cat scans uh but it's pretty pretty natural because um the computer can single down like on Pixels, pixel by pixels. It's just we do not have that capacity as as people. So it's a great use cases overall. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, that's the beauty of artificial intelligence and computers in general that they are better at certain things, right? And uh, like, I also see like the <clears throat> the correlation. Um, uh, between, you know, like uh, stores like Amazon Go, right? The, the one that you can walk in and out and that uses a camera um, system to identify what are you picking up at the shelf, right? It's a very similar AI than the one used in an operating room, yeah, which tracks, you know, whether you are picking up a scalpel or whether you are picking up the bandage and like what is the timing of it and so on. So it's visual recognition systems and classification systems used in very different environments, right? One is to make your picking up, you know, diet coke easier, and the other one is to uh, reduce likelihood of death during surgery. But it's the same system, effectively. It's the same technology underneath. Um, and yes. there are so much, um, yeah, right? Yes, uh, and there have been a lot of progression in this over the last couple of years, especially with object detection models, such as the YOLO series. Do you know what mm -hmm. YOLO stands for in the case of this model? Um, you have to remind me because you told me once before, but I did forget. Yes, it, so it stands for you only look once. So, yes. Uh, uh, we had actually released, um, uh, okay, I believe it was, they released YOLO version six, um, just like the other, the other month. And then just a few weeks later, actually, YOLO uh, version 7 was uh, released. Uh, but this is pretty much an um, um, object detection model that are able to uh, detect in real time, so from a video stream, and it have a, a crazy performance. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers on the most uh, recent models, uh, but I know hitting, you know, 300 frames per second is totally in the range of, of this system. So it allowed to actually detect the uh, objects or classify things on the screen at an extremely high rate. Uh, and here I recommend anyone interested uh, in this to actually try out uh, 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 the YOLO models. I even think we published some tutorial on uh, uh, lablab.ai around it. It's quite user friendly. Uh, we used it ourselves once to make a pig detector in a hackathon we were in. We were aiming to win. Uh, we didn't win, <laughs> but yeah, we didn't complete it. I think. But it's very user friendly. And, I recommend. And it's 
it's very interesting for me to see like uh, like the other the other news today uh, or this week was that Meta released a new protein folding detection model, right? So like big companies, yeah. obviously we we all know DeepMind had this great uh, protein uh, folding um, prediction algorithm. Alpha and now fold. Alpha fold, exactly. And now Meta is also introducing similar tools. And it just shows to me that artificial intelligence goes in a, especially in the medical field, yeah, it goes from the operating theater use case and robots being deployed to help the elderly. It goes to the very beginning as well, right, of the process of when you develop drugs, when you develop um, vaccines, right? And normally uh, predicting protein folding is a, is a super difficult process and it's, uh, and it, it's high risk of failure. And these models um, basically use, um, I don't know exactly what type of technology do they use. Can you maybe elaborate on this, like the protein folding uh, ones? Like what are the, do you know? Because I have no idea what's underneath. No, I, I, I don't dare to answer on, on straight arm, but they are definitely, I believe it's, um, uh, I mean, DeepMind are very into reinforcement learning, but in this case, it probably deep learning. Um, I will actually check up that. I think they, it says here that um, Meta use a language model of protein sequences at the scale of evolutionaries to enable accurate pro structure prediction. So it's a large language model. Wow, that's mm. surprising. Uh, yeah, so in that case, it uh, would probably be some t type of, of uh, uh, transformers, um, yeah, yeah. which is, uh, which is uh, in most cases based on guns, so genetic adversary networks. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's completely, you know, mm, yeah, like they use the 15 billion parameters in the language model, which is obviously not nearly as big as the top language models, but it's much more uh, focused, right, on, on uh, protein folding. So results can be really good in, in this case. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what we're seeing. I believe this week we heard a lot about um, how AI is used in different stages uh, in the medical industry, right, from development of drugs and vaccines to um, operating theater management to avoiding sepsis, to effectively deploying robots for the air, uh, health uh, care uh, of the elderly, yeah, and uh, and these kinds of use cases are super positive. I think that's the prominent thing about them that they make our lives much better. Yeah, and um, I believe we will see this progression in all other fields. Also, the the reason that we see this, uh, especially in in science uh, and healthcare today is because there is big budgets for research. There is, uh, there is the funding needed to actually create um, uh, this type of tools, but we will soon see it um, in a broader market because um, as we say, and, and as it goes, like AI is just a new way of, of writing and operating software and we can't really compete with that uh, by manually writing all our, if this, then that. Um, the AI are able to write this in such a bigger scale and such more fine grain scale. So previous software written by, by humans, we can say it have a pretty uh, 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 chunky, if this, then that, compared to a AI model where it becomes super, super fine, uh, fine, Graded. Okay, do we have anything uh, more for this week? I think we potentially lost uh, Pavel here. Uh, yes, okay. we lost the connection, no, back. but I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I mean, um, so uh, I think that's a good recap of the week. Yeah? Yes. And we will definitely come back next week. So stay tuned. Um, we will also be announcing uh, some exciting news about uh, news in AI for us when we uh, when we see you next week. Yeah. So thank you so much. Take care. Thank you very and, much. Uh, happy hacking.